Are you tired of annotating your images for object detection? Today, I'll be talking about YOLO World, which is a zero-shot object detection model that requires zero training. So I'll be talking about what is YOLO World, why use YOLO World, how does YOLO World work, and go over a real-time YOLO World demo example where the user will pass in a text prompt into our YOLO World real-time program, and the output will be a video feed with the objects annotated coming from our webcam. And if you want the code, check out my website at kevinwoodrobotics.com. I'll have a pinned comment for the link and also in my video description. So what is YOLO World? So YOLO World can be used to detect objects in images or videos using a lightweight object detector like YOLO, and most importantly, using our text prompts. So you could do things like Say things like the person in red, the brown animal, the tallest person, person with a white shirt, the jumping person, person holding a baseball bat, person holding a toy, the standing person, and moon. So why use YOLO world? So the main thing is, is that no training is required. But of course, if you want to fine tune it, you could. But for the example that we'll be doing, you don't need to do any training. Because typically, the object detectors that we deal with Previously, is trained off of Coco, which is with 80 categories. And usually, if you need new objects, you need to train it. And the new methods that can use open vocabulary detection, usually those problems that they have is that the model is too big, and it's hard to deploy for real world. And this one here, Yellow World, uses a lightweight model. So you can see here, the graph on the right shows up the performance of these models. And you can see that Yellow World in the green dots here is at a pretty fast FPS using the V100. So how does YOLO world work? So if you look at this diagram here, you see that the user um, has a prompt here. So right here it says a man and a woman are skiing with a dog. So it goes into a text encoder. And then on the bottom, you see we have an input image and it goes into the YOLO backbone. So the main thing is that both of these gets mixed into this thing here called the vision language pan. So this right here will combine the two uh, domains from text and image, and then figure out some of the similarities between them. And the output will be detecting the regions of the image that have the matches based off of what the input is from the person. So now let's go over our code example. So here I'm running an inference example, and my prompt is men. And you can see that it's only 40 to 40 something percent. So I guess I'm only 40 percent something men. But let's see what it's going to say for the woman as the prompt. Maybe I'll look more like a girl than a guy to this model. OK, so now my prompt says woman. And thankfully, it's not boxing me as a woman. So <laughs> it, it thinks I'm more of a man than a woman. Um, so. That's why you don't see any boxes showing up. But next up, let's take a look at how it's going to look if I have a person holding a bottle. OK, so right now my prompt is person holding a bottle. So apparently with me not holding a bottle, it's already at 60 something percent. Um, now let's see if I take an actual bottle and put it in here. You can see that it spikes up to 70s. If I move it closer, it even goes up to 90 and 80s. But the funny thing is, is that it boxes the bottle as person holding a bottle. But at least the main box, which is me holding a bottle, is more accurate. It goes up to 90-something. And when I take the bottle away, it drops down to 50-something. So that part is actually pretty impress impressive. And if I hold this, it's like a cup, not really a bottle. And you can see that um, it goes up to like 60-something percent, 70-something. So um, it's, it's still. It's still kind of counting that as a bottle, so but definitely you can see that this bottle it's um, more accurate. So now notice when I put it horizontally, it doesn't actually um, box the bottle by itself. Maybe if I put it upside down now, you can see that different orientation affects the results. So this is pretty interesting. Now let's, next up, let's take a look at how it's going to look if I have um, different shirt colors. So let's take a look at that. OK, so now the new prompt is person with a black shirt. And it's surprisingly low. You can see that it's only 40 and 50 something. Um, if I move back, you can see that it uh, changes a little bit, but it's still pretty low. I, I would think it would be higher. But now let's try to trick it with a white shirt. So I'm going to 
gonna hold up a white shirt and see. So right now it says person with a black shirt and it's still at 50 something percent, which is kind of surprising. But let's actually change the prompt now to person with a white shirt and see if it does better with a white shirt. Uh, but here with the black shirt prompt, it's not doing as well as I expected. Okay, so now we're doing the prompt person with the white shirt, and you see that it's at 50 something percent, which is, I think, slightly higher. Now, let's see if I actually put a white shirt up, see how it responds. So you see this is a white shirt. And you see it goes up to like 60 something percent, almost 70. Yeah, so it seems to behave a little bit better when it's a white shirt compared to black shirt. So um, there's definitely some room for improvement for this model. But hopefully you got a good taste of how this works in real time as well as different prompts and how it behaves. And if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.